Welcome back to Book Break and welcome back to another massive book haul. In this video I am going to be unboxing a surprise box I've been sent full of some of the most exciting books that we have published here at Pam Macmillan throughout the month of May and let me tell you it is huge. I have just lugged this box all the way up the stairs to film this. I can't pick it up again so I cannot even pick it up on camera and show you how big it is. Just trust me it's big. So settle in, make yourself a drink, we have got a lot of books to talk about. The first one in here, I'm gonna cry already, Devotion by Hannah Kent. This book is so beautiful and is out now in paperback. I love this totally new cover for the paperback. It is gorgeous to match the contents of this book that made me sob. Devotion is historical fiction and it kicks off in 1836 and we follow these two girls, two 15 year old girls, who set off with their families along with a lot of other families on this resettlement mission. They are traveling all the way to Australia from what was at the time called Prussia, where they have had to move for reasons of religious persecution. The two girls fall in love in a time when they didn't even have a word for this kind of love, um, but many things on this journey keep them apart from each other, and there is a twist halfway through the book that turns it into a totally different kind of book. It's not what you're expecting. It turns into something otherworldly, and that moment in the book, and then the whole second half, broke my heart. I just sat on the sofa weeping at this one. So get ready to cry a lot, but also get ready to read something really, really beautiful. This is a book about queer longing and about female love and female friendship. They have a bond in, in lots of different ways, and it's just stunning. Next up we have Fans by Michael Bond. I am really interested in reading this one. As someone who considers myself a big fan of Taylor Swift, in fact Swifties, it's one of the badges on here, I'm very interested in the whole psychology of fans and that's what this is all about. This is a non-fiction book, a journey into the psychology of belongings. It's all about fandoms. And there's lots of different ways to interpret that. So you don't have to be a huge celebrity fan for this to be relevant to you. For example, some of the other badges on here, Trekkies, Gooners, Brexiteers and Remainers, Toonami, it might be a sense of belonging and community to where you're from. So I think this is a really, really fascinating phenomenon fandom. A fascinating and highly entertaining investigation into worlds of obsession, belonging and human connection. So this is not a negative look at fandom, though I think it is going to explore some of the ways that this kind of obsession can harm people. Um, but it's overall packed with stories of love and hope, of heartache and transformation. It pulls us into a world that is often hard to penetrate and harder to understand. And that actually feels really relevant to the next book in here, which is Is This Okay? by Harriet Gibson. So I have not read this book yet, but Harriet Gibson came into our office a few days ago and read out an extract and it had us all in stitches, so I definitely need to read the rest of it. But it feels linked because this is a memoir about Harriet Gibson growing up, various stages in her life, but all alongside the internet. So it's kind of looking at how the internet affects our mental health and how it feeds into our obsessions. It's kind of endless scrolling and endless comparing. And in the section that Harriet read out for us when she came in, it was essentially a kind of fan fiction in her mind, a story that she was telling herself about her love affair with Chris Martin. So she admitted that she has been obsessed with Chris Martin ever since she was a teenager. She doesn't even really like Coldplay, but as a teenager, being able to kind of stalk these figures online, she developed a parasocial relationship with Chris Martin and now truly believes that they are meant to be. And so the section she read us was this extended daydream about her life with Chris Martin and it was very, very funny. I've heard a lot of people who've read it from around the office saying that as well as being really funny, it's also really moving, kind of painfully honest at parts because it takes us from her teenage years to starting out as a music journalist, all along with these internet obsessions that a lot of us will find really relatable and then takes a darker turn when she went through a really rough time with her fertility treatments and being diagnosed with early onset menopause and suddenly her relationship with the internet took this much darker turn which again a lot of us can really relate to. So those two feel like a good set, I'm going to read them both. This next one is a chunky book and a book that so many people have been so excited about. 
Atlas, the story of Pa Salt. This is by Lucinda Riley and her son, Harry Whittaker. So this is the final book in the Seven Sisters series, which Lucinda Riley very tragically passed away before she could complete. And her son had always promised that he would complete the series for her. And so that's what this is. And this is the book that will give all of the answers that fans of the Seven Sisters series have been waiting years for. It's a really sweeping novel. It takes you from 1928 to 2008. It spans different continents. And everyone who has ever asked who is Par Salt is finally going to find out. Another beautiful paperback here, Haven by Emma Donoghue. This is another historical fiction set in the 7th century, so we're going way back in time, set on this really, really remote island, kind of at the furthest reaches of humanity. I adore Emma Donoghue, I love her writing, I've been working my way through her whole back catalogue, her books are all so different from each other, which is incredible, and I haven't yet read this one, so I think now is the time. It's about a priest who has a dream telling him to leave the sinful world behind and so he searches for this isolated spot he sets off with two other monks to found a new place of worship and so it's a story of survival and loneliness margaret atwood loved this book she said it combines pressure cooker intensity and radical isolation to stunning effect and if margaret atwood says it it must be true for a very different paperback, Picture You Dead by Peter James. This is a Roy Grace novel. You may have been watching Grace, the TV show. And this, if I'm not wrong, is number 18 in the series. So this one is about Harry and Freya who buy a portrait in a car boot sale and they actually buy it just for the frame. But when they remove the portrait, they find underneath it another picture of a stunning landscape. Could it be a long-lost masterpiece from 1770? If genuine, it could be worth millions. And so in this book, Roy Grace is plunged into the unfamiliar and rarefied world of fine art. Outwardly, it appears respectable and above reproach, but he rapidly finds that greed, deception and violence walk hand in hand. This is going to be a real page turner. Scarlet by Genevieve Cogman is a book I've been very interested in picking up because this is a retelling of the French Revolution but with vampires. Revolutionary France is no place to be, especially for aristocrat vampires facing the guillotine. This is a proper good old fashioned adventure story, but with a modern supernatural twist. And the reviews have started coming in from early readers of this book, from influencers who are setting the proof, and they are loving it. Another tearjerker coming up, Brace Yourself, Sparrow by James Hines. This is a book I absolutely adored. This is A Little Life, meets Shaggy Bane, meets Song of Achilles. It is set in ancient Spain and it is about a little boy being brought up in a brothel and it is brutal and tragic and also beautiful and loving. The central relationship is a sort of mother-son relationship. So the little boy who is not given a name, he is sometimes called Sparrow because his mother encourages him to imagine himself as a sparrow so that he can fly away from the pain that he is facing in his body on earth. Yep, I told you, it gets pretty grim. So he is sort of adopted by one of the sex workers at this brothel, one of the wolves is what they call them, and so they have this kind of pseudo-mother-son relationship that is just gorgeous. There's also a romantic relationship between two of the women at the brothel, and parts of that are really beautiful to read about as well. But overall, this is such a brutal and violent world that there just isn't that much space for love of any kind between any of these characters. I would advise you to look up all of the trigger warnings before reading this book because there is a lot in here that can be very upsetting, but I thought it was an absolutely stunning novel set in a really interesting time period that I haven't read much from before. And if you're a fan of A Little Life and you like pain and getting your heart broken, then this is the book for you. Next up, a book I am very proud to work for the company that published this book. This is The Queer Parent, Everything You Need to Know From Gay to Z. So this is a specifically LGBTQIA plus parenting guidebook and it is the first of its kind in the UK. It is completely groundbreaking. As it says here, 90% of queer parenting is just parenting. But being LGBTQ+, plus, when you're a parent, does bring along other questions and concerns that are left out of mainstream parenting guides. 
For example, adoption, surrogacy, fertility treatment, all of the other options at the beginning of your becoming a parent journey, all the way through to trans parenting, to family focused homophobia, to having to come out at the school gates again and again. I went to the launch party for this book and it felt like such an important moment and so moving, having so many people in one room who were so excited to finally have this book that was made just for them. Queer families are just as valid as any other type of family, but the route to becoming a family isn't always easy, and so this book can help, which is incredible. Another yellow book here, Mrs. Porter Calling. Actually got a signed copy here, I see. That's very exciting. This book I just finished reading and I adored it. This is book number three in the Emmy Lake Chronicles, which started with Dear Mrs. Bird, then there was Yours Cheerfully, and number three is Mrs. Porter Calling. I actually just uploaded a video here on this channel where I took all three books on a tour of London and went and visited different key locations that are relevant to the book, which is set during the Second World War. So I will link below to that video if you want to go and learn more about the series. But as an overview, is set during the Second World War. It's about a young woman called Emmy, who by this stage is working for a women's magazine. She has managed to completely revolutionize this women's magazine. Readers are loving it. This magazine helps women with the problems that they are facing during the war, with the questions that nobody else wants to answer for them, with the recipes to help them use their rations to make something they can feed their families with. It's this fantastic magazine that has just been bought and sold to a new owner who wants to change everything. And so Emmy and her friends are going to have to save the day once again. This series as a whole is so funny and jolly and heartwarming, but doesn't shy away from the terrible tragedies that we're facing people every day. And so people do lose loved ones in this series. There are moments that will completely grab you by the heart and not let go. But I just, I love all three books in this series. I think they're divine. A book you might have been waiting to read in paperback, The Club by Ellery Lloyd. This is a really page turning thriller, which I absolutely loved. Again, I have a whole video devoted to it. I will link to that below where I vlogged myself reading this book because it was recommended by Reese's book club and her recommendations never miss. So you will be able to see my live reactions to the twists and turns in this book that genuinely had my jaw dropping. It's such a fun book. It's set at an ultra exclusive private members club where something terrible happens during the opening weekend. And so we dive in and discover all of the dark undercurrents beneath. I love thrillers about really, really rich people being really, really terrible. So of course I was gonna love this. Another paperback release just in time for the summer, One Good Thing by Alexandra Potter. So Alexandra Potter is the author of Confessions of a 40-something F Up, which has recently been adapted into the TV show Not Dead Yet. She's a very, very funny writer and One Good Thing is her follow-up novel. Alexandra Potter tells it as it is with wit, humour and hope. So this is a really heartwarming book about a woman who is in shock. She didn't expect to get divorced. She didn't expect her life to change so suddenly and so drastically where she swaps her busy life in London for a crumbling cottage in the Yorkshire Dales and adopts a scruffy old dog called Harry. So as she takes her dog for walks, she meets all these other people in her new community and discovers that she is not the only one feeling a little bit lost and that sometimes life doesn't turn out the way you planned, but then sometimes it can be even better. Starship Titanic, a gorgeous new edition of a comedy classic written by Terry Jones, based on an outline, based on the game, Starship Titanic, written by Douglas Adams. Douglas Adams is, of course, the author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Terry Jones is a beloved Monty Python actor who actually voiced the parrot in the original game. So this is a, a real collaboration. So just like the other famous Titanic, the Starship Titanic is the most technologically advanced spaceship of its time. We are ready for the launch and nothing could possibly go wrong. For some adorable romance, you could read Fake Dates and Mooncakes by Cher Lee. This is a love story between Dylan, who does delivery runs for his aunt's struggling Chinese takeout in Brooklyn, and Theo, a charming, wealthy customer who convinces Dylan to be his fake date to a family wedding. We just can't get enough of the fake dating trope. Or books that revolve around food. This one revolves around an upcoming mooncake contest. 
love wasn't on the menu, dot dot dot, is what it says on the back here. Obsessed already. For some non-fiction, The Secret Barrister, Nothing But The Truth is now out in paperback. So this is another book from The Secret Barrister, who is an anonymous, unlikely lawyer. Nothing But The Truth is their hilarious, sometimes shocking, and frequently surprising memoir, which reveals the uncomfortable truths and darkest secrets about life in our criminal courts. So think what This Is Going To Hurt did for junior doctors, this book does for junior criminal barristers. And for another profession, if it is teaching that you would like to get an insider look into, you could read I Heard What You Said by Jeffrey Boacci, which is about a black teacher teaching in a white system. Jeffrey Boacci has a clear vision from years of experience of what we can do to dismantle racism in our classroom and then do better by all of our students in the future. As a teacher, specifically as a black teacher, Jeffrey Boacci has had to face a lot of really surprising and challenging questions and assumptions throughout his career, and he dives into each of those, dismantles the assumptions, and looks at how they are linked to some of the most pressing issues of our time. The Shift is a guide to dating, self-worth, and becoming the main character of your own life by Tinks, who you may know as a lifestyle creator with two million followers. She has a podcast, and she's brilliant at giving out really great advice. This book combines really funny personal anecdotes, stories from her own life, with her own revolutionary theories, really simple mindset shifts that will help you change the way you approach decision making, dating, relationships, so many things about your life. Do you know about Tinks' famous box theory dating concept? Because if not, you can learn about it from this book. And if you have already heard of it, in this book she will show you how to actually employ it. Oh, this one's interesting. So earlier I showed you The Queer Parent, which is a parenting guide specifically for queer families. Your Child Is Not Broken is a guide specifically to parenting a neurodivergent child. So it tells the story of the author Heidi Mavir's discovery of her child's neurodivergence and her own fight to be heard and supported. It is funny and honest and really moving at times and really helpful for anyone going through something similar. It says here, your child is not broken is for you if you love or care for a neurodivergent child or young person. You are a wrung out, worried parent who has had enough of no one listening. You lack the confidence to trust your gut. You wish you had the gumption to tell a few more people to bugger off, am I allowed to say that on camera? Or if you just need to know you're not alone. If any of those apply to you, this book is for you. A fab new cookbook, The 20 Minute Vegan by Callum Harris, who is a TikTok sensation making vegan food, or rather quick easy food that just so happens to be plant-based. All of the recipes in here take less than 20 minutes to make, which is exactly my kind of cooking. They also all use accessible and minimally processed ingredients that you can find in your local supermarket. I know a lot of people have found when trying to go vegan that a lot of the ingredients are really hard to come by, really expensive, so this book counters all of that. And the recipes, there are 80 recipes in here, and they range from proper pastas to creamy curries, chocolatey puddings to fluffy pancakes. They are all real comforting, delicious meals. So if you even want to fit just a few more vegan meals into your week, there is a lot of inspiration for you in here. Let's see what random page I turn to. Creamy spinach quesadillas, yes please, they look incredible. We're nearly there, but we're not done yet. Next up, I have a hardback fiction, Western Lane by Chetna Maru. You may have heard about this book already. There have been some really lovely reviews that I've been reading for this one. It's a book about grief and loss, and it's also a book about squash game, not the drink. It's about an 11 year old girl who, along with her sisters, has been playing squash since she was old enough to hold a racket, but after her mother dies, her father enlists her in a pretty brutal training regime, and she slowly finds herself getting lost into this world of squash and distancing herself from her sisters and finding ways through squash to process her grief for her mother. These next three all go together. I have three beautiful new editions of Jane Austen classics. These are lovely new paperbacks, and if you don't know the significance, each of these patterns are taken from the wallpaper in Jane Austen's house. So Jane Austen House Museum that you can actually go and visit, I will put their link in the description box below, 
If you go there, you will see these wallpapers still up on the wall. So this is what Jane Austen herself would have looked at while she was writing. And now they jacket her books, and they're so stunning. I've got here Emma, Sense and Sensibility, and Pride and Prejudice, which are three of my favourites, except I say that about all of Jane Austen books, they're all my favourites. But I do have a soft spot for Emma, because that's my name. And finally, I have two more books to show you, and these books are very exciting indeed, because these two latest editions to the Macmillan Collector's Library were edited by none other than Jean from Jean's Thoughts. She is a booktube darling. She actually she used to host Book Break. You can also now find her over on TikTok at Jean's Thoughts, and she is an expert in all things related to the ancient world. So she has edited two collections for us here, Greek Myths, Gods and Goddesses, and Greek Myths, Heroes and Heroines. They each contain brilliant retellings of famous Greek myths about heroes and heroines or about gods and goddesses, and you get Jean's entertaining commentary throughout an introduction from her. And they're so beautiful, they'll look so lovely on your shelf. I will link to all of Jean's channels below so you can go and get lost down the rabbit hole of her videos, which are very entertaining and very informative all at the same time. She also has a podcast called That's Ancient History, which I will also link to below. And so that's it. I finally can lift this up. It is an empty box. We made it to the bottom of the book haul. Let me know in the comments below which of those books you are most excited to pick up. And I will link here to a playlist of all of our previous book hauls so you can go back and browse through all of the other brilliant books that we publish. And I'll see you next time.